you know, it's the top car you gotta try and beat. You see, this is what I've gone on all along. I like, can't be looking around the cars or winning, like, and um, weighing up what the judges were looking at and expecting. Well, some of your competitors are, are very envious, you know. They've been talking to us. So you're the man to beat in every case. <laughs> <laughs> you're the one who sets the standards. I was 11 years old when Dad entered the World Concourse Championships held at London Olympia. He parked his 1966 Volvo Amazon in a lineup of some of the most amazing concourse cars I'd ever seen. E-Type Jags and Aston Martins, all rolling off trailers fresh from money no object restorations. Even as a child I can remember being taken back by their flawless paintwork and chrome. Dad was a humble Irishman and a private mechanic who operated from a garage at the back of our family home in South London. He had limited space and modest tools and resources to achieve the kind of finish that was required to compete with the elite at the highest level in concourse. As the judges completed their detailed scrutiny of the cars, I can remember him being anxious. He'd poured his heart and soul into presenting the car for that competition. I can still remember his elation, relief and pride as his name was called out as the first prize winner. It really was a David versus Goliath moment, but on that day, he was the best in the world, the world champion, better than anyone else, people with more money, more time and more resources. In his 10 year career on a circuit he amassed over 100 concourse wins, including coveted titles such as the Benson Hedges International and Masterclass Champion. I often look back at his pursuit for perfection and try to understand his formula for success. How does one man take on the world and win? Success comes from doing the little things that everyone knows they should do, but few people actually do. Great results are never down to luck. They take unrelenting effort and uncompromised standards. I can remember Dad working for hours, days or weeks to achieve a single goal. If at the end of that time he stepped back and it wasn't quite right, it would get stripped down and he would start again. It's either right or it's not, he would say. They say it takes 10,000 hours to perfect your craft and achieve a world championship level skill set. Dad would graft for 16 to 18 hours straight and would often joke, there's not enough hours in a day to get the job done. But when you're fueled by your passion, you're prepared to do the hard yards and you're always conscious that there may be someone out there working just as hard, if not harder. He approached each competitive event as if it was his first. There was never any cockiness or bravado, just a humble man who was proud to do his best and pleased to display his talents alongside like-minded enthusiasts. Dad lived his life by the motto, do today what others won't, so tomorrow you can do what others can't. And he taught me that whether my pursuits were in competition, business, or life in general, I should never underestimate the importance of working harder than the competition, not compromising on high standards, having strong self-belief and staying humble.